Well, about two years ago, I built this belt grinder, and it's extremely useful. And uh, every time it appears in one of my videos, I get comments like, uh, when are you going to do a, a video on your belt grinder? Well, don't really want to build another one because I got one. But uh, I got an extra motor, and I thought, well, maybe I'll make a better one. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to build a better belt grinder. Uh, this one's actually good enough, but well, let's, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, what I'm going to do is uh, use a larger motor and I'm going to increase the lower pulley size to this diameter. I've got to sleeve this piece of aluminum I got. This is meant to hold bearings. Uh, I've got a pulley for the upper idler. I'm going to cut the flanges off it and uh, it's already got bearings. So that'll be pretty easy. It's even crowned. Uh, these are surplus from the printing industry. I've got a bearing that fits in here so I can kind of get an idea of the measuring that diameter and what I've got to turn that down to. But let's take a look at how this uh, belt grinder is made. It's really, in principle, at least fairly simple. It's got two six by six uh, half by half inch steel plates. And they're just screwed together with three quarter twenty flathead screws on the bottom. That just makes an L shaped structure right there. Right here, I cut a hole in that half inch plate and it matches a 56 motor mount. 56 motor mount is real common for uh, pumps, usually on pumps or gearboxes. Uh, it's a real common mount. Uh, and the rest of it, just, uh, well, we've got to turn a pulley. And you'll notice that's uh, real deep in there. It's a bolt-on or a nut uh, threaded end on the motor shaft. That's how most of the pump motors are. Uh, but I had to make it real deep like that because the shaft is short. Uh, uh, but it's probably only about maybe three-quarter inch of the shaft is in that pulley. But this should work. Uh, steel's good. Uh, should hold up good. The top it's just a uh, simple pivot. Putting the belts on is pretty easy. Light on the end like that. There's spring tension. Never adjusted it. It's about right, I guess. Uh, there is no tracking adjustment. Both pulleys are crowned and it keeps the belt centered. Uh, as long as you don't go over a two inch belt, you really don't need any kind of tracking adjustment. I put a couple of set screws here to kind of skew this lever and found I didn't need them. I just took them out. I looked uh, into getting some more half inch 6x6 six six steel plate and uh, I got this surplus. I couldn't find any. Uh, I did find one. It was $200 for a 12 foot piece and uh, I don't need 12 feet so I'm going to use some surplus aluminum I got uh, to make this part. And because I'm using a uh, larger pulley on the bottom, the tool rest will have to be out a little bit further and I'm going to make that a little bit different. I'm going to, I'm going to make this probably 6x8 instead of 6x6. Uh, six six. Okay, first thing to do is repaint this ugly motor. Well, that looks a lot better. I learned that from this old Tony. I think that's pretty useful. What do you think? Okay, here's, here's what I'm going to use for the frame. This is some uh, metric aluminum plate. Uh, used to be a two-part frame, but I've, I've uh, cut it down. It was two pieces. Anyway, I'm going to sit like this. That. and this piece will mount right right there. I got a 
bore a hole in there for the motor mount. I'm about it just like, just like that. And that gives me a place to mount my uh, tool rest right here. Uh, the only thing I don't like about it, I'd rather work with half inch because I'm losing length on my shaft. I'm only going to have that pulley on there about that far. I don't like that, but it's better than spending $200 on some uh, half inch plate to make this thing. But I think it'll work good. This, this should be plenty strong. It's easy to work with. Uh, next step is this right here. I drew it in CAD. It's a 56 motor mount. This is the hole I'm going to cut. Bolt positions. And this ring right here is what I'm going to uh, drill to mount it to my uh, rotary table. Now the last time I did this, I did it in a four jaw chuck. But I was working with a square piece of steel. I uh, just uh, mounted in my chuck and used a lathe tool to cut the hole. And it didn't work great, but it did work. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this out, tape that to this piece of metal, and transfer uh, center, uh, use a center punch to transfer these hole positions and the center hole. This is something I do fairly often. I, I draw something in CAD and then I print it 100% and I'm sure that my uh, inkjet printer uh, is not 100% accurate but it's, it's pretty darn close and this is really not that critical anyway. Uh, I'm just going to tape that right there and transfer the holes. These holes right here on this inner circle are going to be what I use to bolt it to my rotary table. Okay, I've got this, uh, I guess number two Morris taper in the middle of my rotary table. And i got a, a worn out dead center for my lathe. I burned it up on one occasion. I'm going to drop that in there, and I, I'm going to use that for my center. There's my center hole right there. And I'm going to keep drilling it larger until it sits down on those spacers. So I'm going to just go a little at a time, and it'll go down on that taper just a little bit each time I drill bigger until I get going to be kind of tedious. I'll probably have to drill it three or four times to get it right. I got it. I guess I drilled that 20 times. <laughs> Stepped up a 30 second at a time. Anyway, these are going to go right here. And my T-nuts and bolts are going to go through that to hold the plate on the rotary table. rocking just a little bit and it's this aluminum that that taper will just create a very slight it'll knock the edge off the edge of the hole and center it up perfect okay I made a little mark right there indicates the outer limit of my circle I'm gonna go in just a little bit from that make one cut and then measure it Okay, I measured my motor, and hmm, fairly close. Needs to be just a just a whisker bigger. That's not 
Not too bad. That's 18 thousandths bigger. wonder if that's too much. Wouldn't be the end of the world if it wasn't a perfect fit. Go with 11 or 12 thousandths bigger and see what happens. Uh, I think that's perfect. That's about two, three thousandths over. I speeded things up a little bit and added coolant. For some reason it does better clockwise. I'm not sure why. I'm actually through right there. I'm out of the stop. There we go. No broken end mill. <laughs> Good deal. Looks good. I like it. Well, that fit really well. I'm pleased with that. I may make these uh, a countersink because I've got some clearance issues here with the pulley and everything. That'll go right here like that. See, I don't want the belt to run into those bolts, so I'll probably countersink then. Well, that's going to be a nice grinder. Okay, I think the next step is to turn this steel down to fit in this pulley. And then we'll drill and fit it to this shaft right here and determine what kind of depth we need. Uh, I wish it was a little bit longer. I don't have anything to grab onto there. I'll have to flip it in the chuck. Uh, it'll be alright. It'll be close enough. When I face this off, I gave myself a center right there. Uh, that'll help support it when it's in the chuck. I'm going to have it just barely in the chuck. I'm using the center to, to posi uh, force it into the chuck, just like that. That way I know it's, it's straight. Now i got to determine what diameter I need to make that. Okay, this is going to have to fit in the pulley. And the pulley had this uh, bearing in there. It was a pretty snug fit. Uh, I'll make it 1,000, make this 1,000 larger than my bearing. And the bearing is uh, 62 millimeter, which is 2.441. And this is 2.5 inches. So if you do the math, that's uh, 59,000 larger. Half of that is 29,000. 29, so i got to take 29,000. About one thousandth over. Well, that's pretty close. Okay, I've had this pulley in the oven at four hundred degrees for about twenty minutes. And I've had the uh, steel section and ice in the freezer. Let's see if it'll fit. Ah, look at that. <laughs> well, the steel slug was one thousandth over with the aluminum boys and I, I changed the temperature, it just dropped right in. That's great. Well, that steel slug's been in there all of about three minutes
and it won't move now. Okay, most often on a flat belt, uh, sanding belt, conveyor belt, or whatever, the crown of the pulley is what keeps everything centered. Uh, the flange is not needed. Uh, I think they put them on there in case something hits the belt, it'll fall back into the slot. But uh, actually, the flange, if the belt ever gets onto the flange, the belt will run up on the flange because it's larger in diameter. Anyway, I'm going to remove that flange. Okay, I got it in my four jaw chuck here, and I dial indicated to the center slug. There's just a little tiny flange sticking out there. So the center is concentric. Now I'm going to trim that off flush, just as a starting point. Cut my crown. And then I'll uh, flip it over. When I flip it over, I, because I'm going to cut this, after I flip it over, I'm going to have to dial indicate right in here so that it'll be concentric when I flip it over. When you cut a crown, you're cutting a, like a V. There'll be a high spot in the middle. And if you don't get it exactly concentric, that V will wobble all the way around the pulley. I don't know if that makes sense. Probably, it'll probably wobble a little bit, so you, I'll be able to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm facing the aluminum to make it square to what I'm turning there, uh, it'll also take off just a little bit of that steel slug I just put in there. The way that side will all be true. That way when I flip it over and seat it in my chuck, it'll be square, or hopefully close. Taking a tiny bit off of that steel. Okay, what I'm doing here is I've got my compound angled slightly. I mean, it's just about uh, square to the pulley, but I'm defining the crown. So I'm going to touch the tool to my pulley right there. Okay, it's touching right there. And then I'm going to take the cross or the compound at the angle I got it set at and measure how far away I'm here. Now on past belt grinders, I, uh, in fact the one that I'm duplicating right now, it was a twenty thousandths difference which is pretty slight but, and I have no idea what appropriate is or what is ideal. But I know 20 thousandths worked. I got about just over 20. It's really not critical. 20, 25 thousandths crown. Probably not a problem. I think a little larger would be better than not enough crown. I think the only real drawback to a lot of crown would be it would stretch the belt in the middle as it was running over a period of time. Still kind of big.
That's it. Twenty thousandths. Lock the compound there. Okay. Here's what I'm doing to stop the uh, movement of the compound and the cross slide and everything. Anytime you're turning something like that, you're moving. Makes an uneven crown. So I've got a uh, rechargeable driver uh, drill here with a socket on it. I'm going to use it to uh, reduce that influence of my hand on the compound. It'll make a smoother uh, smoother crown. You'll see what I mean. Well, the drill doesn't hardly go slow enough. That was a safety feature in my leg. It knocks the belt off. <laughs> Probably just need to take real small bites. I'm taking five thousand at a time. Okay, I've uh, set my cross slide to zero. My carriage is locked, and I'm going to back this out of the way. But I want to go back to zero when I flip this over. Okay, I flipped this over in the chuck. I got it firmly seated in in the jaws, uh, but it's slightly smaller in diameter where I turn the crown. But I want this area where I've actually turn part of the half the crown to be concentric. So I've got my dial indicator set up there. And I'm kind of slow at doing this. This is a high jaw, so I think I went way too far. That's it. Let's see if we're close to being in the center. I'm going to take one more pass. That's about a half a thousand on my cross light from all the way. That's perfect. I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not, but you can see where the two crowns meet. Pretty darn close. Okay, I'm just cutting the uh, end of this flush with the pulley and I'll true up this right here. Make it look nice. And uh, then we'll be ready to uh, bore the center. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bore the center of that pulley, this diameter right there, the threaded diameter. And then I'll go back and enlarge part of that hole 
right there. I, I don't know if I'll do it with a boring bar or a drill or probably a drill and then a boring bar. So that's 434. It's actually 7 sixteenths is what it is. So we'll just bore it to 7 sixteenths. Okay, what I need here is quarter inch clearance right there. That'll be the back edge of the pulley. So, a quarter inch at seven eighths of an inch. Okay, a seven eighths of an inch bore this diameter. I think that's five eighths. Yep, six two five five eighths. That's good. I can use a ream to get to the final size. See if it fits. Well, that's it. Now we're going to bore this side out so that we can put a nut on there. So here's what we got to do to that pulley now. Bored out real big like that so we can get to that nut. Doesn't have to be quite that big, uh, but we need to be able to get to that nut. It's got to be big enough to put a washer on it, I think. Okay, I'm just wasting some of the metal away here, and then I'll take a boring bar and. and Make a square bottom hole in there. It's perfect. I'll probably use the nut to pull it back up on there all the way. Lacks about an eighth of an inch. Be good and tight like that. Uh, yeah, I think that concludes part one. Uh, be sure and stay tuned for part two. Hopefully it'll be just a two-part video. Uh, and thanks for joining me.